I've spent the last few years working for one of the largest shockwave clinics in North America, and I've learned a thing or two about the power and untapped potential of regenerative medicine. But the march towards a future where sickness is healed from its root cause is challenged by the influence of big pharma and their deep pockets. So now we're forced to answer questions like, how do we get rid of joint pain, take back our performance in the bedroom, and heal diseases from the inside out without band-aid medications or negative side effects? This show will give you the answers. Follow along as I interview the world's top experts and doctors and how they transformed their lives and their patients' lives using the newest advances in biotechnology. I'm your host, Austin James Wolf, and you're listening to Modern Biotech Radio. What is going on, Modern Biotech Pioneers? Today we're talking about red light therapy and how does it actually work. Uh... The next episode I'm going to shoot is the different types of light therapy because there's a lot of different types of light therapy. You got red light, infrared light, you got blue light, you got green light, you got yellow light, you got uh, ultraviolet light. I'm going to go through all those in the next episode. Today's episode is about uh, how does red light therapy actually work because there's a lot of stuff on red light therapy. There's actually over 3,000 peer-reviewed studies on red light therapy and its effectiveness. Uh, Right now I'm reading... I just finished reading Ari Witten's book. This is, this is like this is the book on red light therapy. It's it's called the Ultimate Guide to Red Light Therapy by Ari Witten. Again, I, I don't make any money off of this. Uh, I just thought it's it's a great it's a great book. It's a combination of uh, a lot of the research that's been done on red light therapy. Here, I'll hold it up. A lot of a lot of there's a lot of research that's been done on red light therapy, and this guy put it all together in a very digestible way. It's not it's not written for scientists and researchers. It's written for you and me. It's written for uh, the average folk who didn't take eight years of medical school. So uh, it's 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 um I don't want to say watered down. It's very simplified. It 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 explains it in a very simplified way. So it's a great read if you're very in- interested in red light therapy uh, or if you're considering buying like a Juve device or if you've heard Ben Greenfield talk about it. Uh, I I highly recommend picking up this book first because this will inform you on everything there is to know on red light therapy. So. Uh, I actually was inspired to make uh, these next couple episodes explaining my findings uh, in this guy's book, uh, which, of course, he references all the clinical studies uh, where he found all the data. So he extracted the data from clinical studies. I'm also looking at data from clinical studies uh, and sort of putting it all together for you guys, for you to understand, all right? So today I want to talk about how red light therapy actually works. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a nice little diagram that I found on this study. It's called the Nuts and Bolts of Low-Level Laser Therapy, Light Therapy. This was published in, it was published online in 2011, it was published in a journal uh, in 2012, and they brought up this cute little diagram, (coughs) excuse me, this cute little diagram about how it actually works. So if you're on YouTube, great, you can see it right in front of you. Uh, If you're listening on the podcast, allow me to explain. So what they're doing is they show this uh, red light therapy uh, going into the skin and going into the cell membrane. So the way that we like to explain it is uh, red light therapy penetrates the skin. It penetrates the human body more than other types of light like blue light, right? So red light therapy at a certain wavelength, which I'll explain in the next episode. I'll go deep into the science on the wavelengths in the next episode. But all you have to know for this episode is the red light, the specific wavelength. Now, uh, let me. I should back up. Depending on what wavelength, the actual length of the wave of the light that's hitting your eyes or or not depending on the length of the wave that depends on what color it is right now the actual visible spectrum of light uh it, it's a very small amount of of um it's a very small i guess range of wavelengths that the human eye can actually see so on one end of the visible light spectrum you got red and then it goes into infrared which is invisible to the human eye and then it goes uh, on and on and on and on and on. It gets longer and longer and longer until you get like um, radio waves, which are pretty long. Uh, and then on the opposite end of the visible spectrum, you got blue light, then you got violet light, and then it goes into ultraviolet light, which again is invisible to the human eye. The ultraviolet light is the thing that um, the sun gives off that gives you a tan, it gives you uh, vitamin D, and it can also give you a sunburn, right? So ultraviolet light, again, is you can't see it, and then the wavelengths get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. I believe I could be wrong that the shortest wavelengths are the gamma, the gamma ray wavelengths. Um, if you've ever studied science before, there are these things called gamma ray bursts. And fun fact, if one hit Earth, we'd all die instantly. It's crazy, right? They're just wavelengths. But they're very powerful, very high in energy. They're very small. Whereas radio waves, they're very, very long, right? 
So uh, those are the, that's in a nutshell as simple as I can put the, the wavelengths and uh, as far as visible light goes. So the visible light spectrum is very small compared to the, the range of wavelengths that wavelengths can be. And uh, on the far end of the, the longer end of the visible wavelengths are the red lights. The shorter end are the blue and violets, right? And then right uh, on the opposite ends of those, the violet, if you go shorter, you got ultraviolet. For red and near infrared, if you go longer, you got infrared, right? Does that make sense, guys? I hope that makes sense. I, I don't mean to bog you down with too much science, but it's important to understand. Now, there's a certain range of wavelength that actually penetrates the skin the deepest and has... Um, what I think is the most therapeutic effect, according to the 3,000 plus studies on it, right? And that's that's red light and near infrared light. So the way that it works is the red light penetrates the skin, it penetrates the tissue, and it goes into your, it penetrates the cells, right? Now this red light stimulates the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. You probably remember that from elementary school, biology, or high school. And the mitochondria, the way that the mitochondria actually powers the cell is through making a molecule called ATP. This ATP is the energy molecule. is It's what powers the actual cell, right? So um, uh, I don't know if this is a good metaphor, but let's say you have a cell. If the mitochondria is the battery, the ATP is the actual energy that comes out of the, the battery. So when you put a battery into something, uh, it uses a transference of electrons to power, let's say your remote. Let's say your, your remote it's running low on batteries, you pop in a new battery. Uh, it's not the battery itself that's doing, uh, it's not the battery itself that's that's powering your remote. It's, it's the transfer of electrons within the battery that's powering the remote. So think about it that way. The mitochondria is like the battery and the ATP is the actual power that's coming from this battery, right? So the more ATP, typically the more ATP that a mitochondria produces, the more energy a cell has and the more functional it can be, the more productive it can be. So that's kind of the whole philosophy of how the science works. So, I mean, there, there is such thing as having too much ATP, but we won't get into that. For the purposes of uh, life itself in the modern era, uh, our cells typically don't work as hard as they can because we stay inside all day, we don't exercise as much. So typically the mitochondria don't produce as much ATP as as the cells need to to function at maximum uh, productivity. Does that make sense, guys? So uh, just, to, just to recap, the more ATP the mitochondria produces, the more productive the cell is, right? Red light therapy helps the mitochondria in all of your cells produce more ATP. Does that make sense? So if you shine, uh, let's say one thing that we're, uh, one thing that's been studied is, okay, let's use red light therapy on hair. Let's try and treat hair loss. If we shine red light therapy on the scalp, it's going to stimulate the mitochondria in the hair cells, the hair follicle cells, the cells that grow your hair, the dermal papilla cells. If we stimulate the mitochondria, it's going to create more power, more ATP. That's going to help these cells function more productively. What happens when your dermal papilla cells... Uh, are not as vibrant, they're unhealthy, they're dying, your hair's not going to be as good, right? Now, if you help these cells function better, your hair might become better. <laughs> that's as simple as I can make it, guys. So that's how it works. Uh, another benefit of using red light therapy is mitochondria can sort of get, I don't know if this is scientifically right to say, a scientist might smack me across the face if I said that, but mitochondria can get clogged <laughs> by nitric oxide. Uh, nitric oxide can sort of clog the mitochondria and reduce the amount of ATP that it can produce. You might have heard of nitric oxide as the thing that improves blood flow, right? Now, red light therapy, or near-infrared light, when it stimulates the mitochondria, it can help the mitochondria unclog itself of the nitric oxide. It releases more nitric oxide into the system. That way it has more room to turn oxygen into ATP. That's kind of how it works. Um, it's very simplified. It's it's a lot more complex than that, but at, at a top line level, this is uh, it's very simplified. So, red light therapy goes into the mitochondria, stimulates the mitochondria, so it releases more of its clogged nitric oxide. It releases more nitric oxide into your system, which can improve blood flow in that area. And now the mitochondria has room to pull oxygen from your blood. It can pull oxygen to create ATP, which turns into energy for the cell. 
so does that make sense guys i hope i hope that makes sense for you so what they found is when they use red light therapy on the scalp not only can it uh create more energy for the actual dermal papilla cells itself to help grow more uh luscious hair it also improves the amount of nitric oxide in that area which improves blood flow to that area and uh as we all know or i hope you know by now if you're listening to the show more blood flow to the area is typically a good thing right whether it's your scalp your eyes your veins down there if you know what i mean more blood flow is good right so that's in a nutshell how it works that's why there's over 3,000 studies on red light therapy it's because if you increase blood flow in nearly any area of the body there's going to be some therapeutic effects athletes are using this for muscle growth right ben greenfield goes naked shines red light therapy on his balls and uh, if you shine right red light therapy down there uh the hypothesis is if you shine red light therapy down on the Leydig cells, those are the cells that actually produce the most testosterone in your body. If you shine red light therapy down there, what it's going to do is it's going to stimulate the mitochondria in those Leydig cells. Now your Leydig cells, the ones that are responsible for producing testosterone, they're the most testosterone, about 90%, 90%, 95% of testosterone in your system are produced by the Leydig cells. If you stimulate the mitochondria, now these Leydig cells work better they're more productive so your machine that actually creates testosterone is more productive what do you think that means it probably means an increase in testosterone this has only been proven in rat models so far they have yet to empirically prove it in humans but uh, that is the hypothesis and most biohackers who are using red light therapy on their balls they do see an improvement in their testosterone they they have a before and after blood blood labs and in fact we may or may not be doing that in our clinic as well, uh, actually testing before and afters uh, of people's total testosterone using their blood work with red light therapy. So it's kind of cool because, uh, again, we're all about sexual wellness, sexual health, sexual performance at the Nova Center. So, uh, of course, anything that can help improve uh, a man or a woman's sexual health or sexual performance without negative side effects, that's what we want, right? So in a nutshell, that's how it works. So there's, there's tons of other benefits. You can go ahead and pick up this guy's book, Ari Witten, on Amazon. Super cheap. Um, one of the parts in his book's page 30. He talks about uh, the tissue mechanisms. He talks about all the numerous studies where red light therapy can help. It can help you with the muscles. It can help with your brain. It can help with it can help with pain, actually. It can help with healing. It can help with hair, skin, fat, stem cells. And we have a hypothesis, which we are currently testing, that Shining red light therapy on your junk if you're a guy. If you're a woman listening to this, I'm sorry. Um, in fact, this might also help women as well. But our hypothesis is if you shine red light therapy on your junk, it could improve sexual performance because what are we doing? Uh, we're stimulating the tissue cells to work better. We're stimulating the bloodstream. It releases nitric oxide into the bloodstream, which helps more blood flow get to that area. And what we're also doing is we're stimulating those lytic cells so they can improve uh, your testosterone. And... Uh, testosterone has also been linked to a higher nitric oxide level, so uh, that will overall improve the amount of blood flow into the penis. So that's our hypothesis. Uh, we're currently testing it right now because if it works, I mean, hey, that'd be great. Every guy wants to, you know, reach that next level, right? If you're at 10 out of 10, you want to be 11 out of 10, right? So that's that's currently our hypothesis that we're testing. I won't make any claims on that, but uh, yeah, we'll see. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave me a review. Let me know, uh, or if you're watching in, on YouTube, type below in the comments. Let me know what you thought. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or any, any further videos you want me to do, and we'll go ahead and do them. Thanks, guys. Want to see what the top experts have to say behind the scenes? Just go to modernbiotechradio.com, and you'll get instant access to every behind-the-scenes interview for free. Now, these interviews are not for the public, so please don't share. But if you'd like to pull back the curtain with me and learn what secrets they reveal, just go to modernbiotechradio.com and get instant access to these interviews for free. Again, that's modernbiotechradio.com. If you'd like to learn the best kept secrets that they can't share publicly, but allowed me to share in private, just go to modernbiotechradio.com and get instant access to all of these interviews completely free. I'll see you there. And now for our lovely legal and medical disclaimer. While I make every effort to broadcast correct information, I am still learning. I will double check all my facts, but realize that medicine is a constantly changing science and art. One doctor may have a different way of doing things from another. I'm simply presenting my views. 
that are as evidence-based as possible. I welcome any comments, suggestions, or correction of errors. I take no money from drug companies. By listening to this podcast or reading this blog or watching this YouTube video, you agree to not use this podcast blog or video as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others, including, but not limited to, patients that you are treating. Consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the podcast, blog, or YouTube account. Under no circumstances shall Austin Wolf, Launch Medical, Moonpool LLC, or the Novus Anti-Aging Center, or any guests or contributors, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Launch Medical, Moonpool LLC, or the Novus Anti-Aging Center, be responsible for damages arising from use of the podcast, blog, or video. This blog or podcast or video should not be used in any legal capacity whatsoever, including but not limited to establishing standard of care in a legal sense or as a basis for expert witness testimony. No guarantee is given regarding the accuracy of any statements or opinions made on the podcast, blog, or video. This website, blog, podcast, and video are all HIPAA compliant. While you may give your email address to subscribe to the website posts or to post information on the website or blog, I will never share your email address or contact information with any third parties without your explicit permission. One more note. I have no idea what I'm talking about, and people that listen to me have a 100% mortality rate. This is true. Think about it. So please, consult your physician for any medical advice, uh, because this blog post podcast and YouTube video or any other video are meant for educational and entertainment purposes only.